Hey guys, Clyde here at Leechburg Lights. Uh, I want to welcome you to my third video today, and uh, today is August 1st, 2016. We are in the process of, uh, well, we're actually going to begin the process in a moment of taking some of my old sequences and converting them from a 2010 2009 single channel uh, LOR. Um, red, white, and uh, green uh, display with three different channels of AC into the conversion and molding or melding of uh, RGB for uh, the purposes of upgrading for a 2016 light display. Uh, I have a significant number of, uh, of sequences. This is 2010's directory. I mean, I, I have probably 16 to 18 of them and maybe 10 of them that I haven't used since 2010. Uh, if I go back and I go up one more layer I have my 2009 shows which you know also could be imported and then I have 2011 and 2012 which a significant number of my uh, elements I had close to 200 channels uh, 250 channels or something um, in LOR that had the red, the green, and the clear as individual channels on each element. So there's a bunch of sequences that I can reclaim that do not have pixels in them. However, they do have the RGB element in them, and I can extract that and use a sequence that I haven't used in so many years that would be so wonderful to add back in. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go from this old sequence into a current modern LOR channel configuration and then we're going to export using the mapping uh, procedure from LOR into uh, X lights and that's what we're gonna go do right now are you ready let's go guys what I want to do is I want I, I've chosen a sequence that uh, I want to convert into uh, the 2016 display and I'm gonna walk you through how I'm doing it okay first thing we're gonna do is uh, since I'm opening this up I'm probably gonna have to uh, uh, change the media file and this is the original I'm just gonna paste it here because I actually before start a recording I updated it to a constant bit rate of 192 uh, a constant bit rate of 192 so um, I'm going to select that. It's now an MP3 versus a WMA file. And uh, this is the display that we're, we're working with. This is the sequencing I'll be working with. I'm just going to take this off and put this off to the side. And let's see. Let's get rid of this thing. I don't like that thing. Um, so now I'll go ahead and save it because it, it is... Uh, because it's an older file and I have the new media file for it. So if we are going to create a new sequence, let's go ahead and create a brand new sequence this way in uh, Lightarama S4. Now I am using Lightarama Sequence Editor version 4.3.14 Pro um, and I'm going to create a new musical sequence. Uh, I'm going to, this is my actual Lightarama directory in the, on the hard drive. I'm going to right click and I'm going to paste the MP3 in there as well. And I'm going to select it. And this is my typical, um, my typical setup routine. I usually don't fill in the metadata here. And I, I usually use this, sequ this is my uh, conversion track. And then I have, uh, my timings. I don't really set a timing. I usually use 0 .05 as my dot. That's 20 squares per second. 0 .05 seconds. Uh, and I'll use the fixed timing grid. And uh, this is save as defaults obviously. Click OK. And now it's going to create this new sequence. OK. We're going to click on this Windows uh, file menu and we're going to cascade horizontally okay uh, I meant vertically huh there we go now um, you really don't need a lot of real estates uh, uh, for for doing this um, because basically all you're going to do is you're going to begin copying now uh, you can see my old setup in uh, LOR was uh, I have all the channels here in 
uh, in the sequence showing um, with the reds all together and if you scroll down you see the greens all together and then you see all the clear or white together um, and then down below all of those segments or sections then I have other elements such as the reindeer my arch segments um, in the future I would add fire sticks and so forth so this was all of my sequencing and then the radio signs are there there's the fire sticks um, and the mega tree which I really never I didn't get there yet I was still working on that so um, let's go up and we're gonna start at the top and I'm gonna work my way down now I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to begin opening up some things because it's gonna help I know that I have a few more windows than I did before but for the most part I have window 1 through 10 and I've actually grown from window 1 through 10 to 1 through 10 a B and uh, window 6 a B C you know there's a couple things that I've added through the years so I'm just gonna go ahead and double up on those but I'm gonna open all of these up by clicking after I've, I've, I've got the model group here this is my DMX universe number one my dummy universe and um, I'm just going to go through and I'm going to open everything that I'm going to be copying and pasting in. So I'm selecting everything that I am actually using in my display compared to the 2010. 2010 I didn't have snowflakes and I didn't have some uh, uh, I didn't have the the broken up icicle lines uh, that have multiple channels like I do now. I only had one channel of icicles for the upper and one for the lower. And then I had two channels later on. I had blue and then white. So, uh, and for the most part, my my tree line here, each tree line has three uh, uh, separate RGB channels for the lower, the medium, and the upper of the tree. Uh, whereas my old tree was just one channel per color. Now I'm adding in, this is for Bell's right and Bell's left, I don't know if you can see that very well. Um, there might be some sequencing that I might add for the Bell's just because I can. Um, and there might be other things, like I have the, the Mega Arch, which uh, might be useful as some other uh, sequencing element. But um, in any event, uh, that's the basics for uh, for just the dumb RGB channels. Let me go back up here and I'll collapse this and then we're, go we're gonna go through and I know that I'm not using the spinners. Uh, I am gonna use the upper roof line. I'm only gonna open the first one, the first channel in it, and then the lower roof line I'm gonna open it, just the first one, and then we'll leave the spirals alone. The star line uh, I didn't create this during this year. Um, the ground pixels right because I had a ground channel and ground pixels left because I had the ground channel and then um, anything else. DMX these are all this is the this is the mega tree and these are the new pixels and these are the fire sticks. I'm not bringing the fire sticks and the arches in because they're two different formats. The new ar the new arches and fire sticks are pixel based so there's no reason to bring those in because they're only single colored pixels. They're only white pixels so I don't want to get into wrapping it up. There's only five channels in my old ones. Now let's uh, let's move on. Um, this is gonna be kind of boring um, There's because there really is a lot to doing this one thing I will say is the easiest thing to do is the reindeer because that's one for one. Um, the other thing I want to do is I'm going to bring out this screen here and I'm going to make sure that I have paste by time uh, uh, selected because no matter what happens there's a possibility that this timing might not be exactly the same as this even though I can tell they are they might not be. You might have sh uh, a shared sequence from somebody and their timing isn't the same as the timing that your default is set to. So make sure that you that you do uh, open this up and make sure it says paste by time. So with that I'm going to go in and I'm going to start with the reindeer. Now I know the reindeer are down here on the bottom. Somewhere there on the bottom. There we go. Reindeer. And I'm going to click on the first row and I'm going to click the home key and I'm going to hold the shift key and I'm going to arrow down or you can click and drag now with that in mind I'm going to hit the end button on my keyboard while holding the shift key and that's going to select the entire area I'm going to right click and I'm going to hit copy 
and then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to hit paste. And you can use the sh keyboard shortcuts or you can right click and you can paste. So what this effectively has done, it has just entered all of the sequencing data from, uh, from the first original LOR controller uh, in sequence into the 2016 uh, import screen. I want to uh, exemplify exactly how to copy and paste. There's the, the method, the two methods, the one that I use is this one. I select, my, I, I select the row that I'm copying and I push the home key. I'm all the way to the left over here. I can't go any further left. We're at one second. I'm all the way to the left. I hold the shift key down and then at the same time I push the end key on the keyboard. I like keyboard shortcuts. I don't have to move my mouse around as much. That's just the way it is. Um, and then what you can do is you can right click and you can copy. Or you can hit control, hold control down on your keyboard and C. That copies it. Another thing that you can do is you can use the select row function. You can just select the row that, you're, that you want. You can right click and you can select row. Okay? Then you can right click and you can copy. Once you do that, you can go over to your sequence and whatever row that you're putting it in, whether red or green or just an AC channel, just make sure that you're over to the leftmost by hitting home the home key on your keyboard or make sure you arrow over to the right you see the one second mark and you're at the very left side of the of the space then you can right click and you can hit paste if you've done this correctly you can slide over and you can see whatever sequencing that you've added into that part of your uh, modeling so now all the sequencing for this sequence for the reindeer is completely done whenever it maps it will map just fine and I won't have to worry about it it'll be a it'll be a nice easy transition so to speak um, so we can close out of this that's all I'm gonna bring into here uh, let's go into the dumb RGB and let's go to the window frames because that's the first thing this is my red uh, window frame number one through five I'm gonna double up on window frame six and use it in two places as well as window frame ten in two places okay I just went ahead and copied that in you can see some sequencing has gone in there All right, I want to show you something while uh, I've taken a break here. And I want to show you that uh, anywhere that I'm pasting the white, I'm copying the white for, for the window, for example, and uh, I'm pasting it over here. Now, I would like this to be white, all of it. But the problem is, is that I don't want to overwrite the sequencing of the green and the red. But I want to include it. I want to kind of fit it in there. So on this uh, toggle screen that comes out here, I'm changing this paste format paste by time I'm leaving that alone but I'm gonna paste from the foreground and I'm gonna paste it to the background so right now as I paste anything for blue and I paste it into the green and the red it's only going to copy into places where the red and the green have not been activated yet in other words it's going into the background so I'm gonna do that here in this next uh, you can see I did it with the blue and the green here and I didn't do it here yet so we'll do it in this one here I'll do it to the red and I'll slide over and show you exactly how this works so here there wasn't any sequencing whatsoever the white is supposed to go here but because there is some sequencing this little bit of sequencing right here the green cannot activate and it won't so it comes out as purple and because red and blue make purple but then it also has a wee bit of green now if I want to I can go back and I can edit this 
so that it comes out 100% white. But do I really care? It's actually going to add a little bit of emphasis and it's going to add a little bit of pizzazz to the sequence. And if I really don't like it, I can go back and change it anyway. But for now, I'm just going to leave it as is. Okay, we've just saved our uh, sequence and the total time it's taken now to do all the sequencing is roughly around 50 minutes uh, with a, a little break in here and there. And so now I think that's good enough. I think we're going to go ahead and uh, minimize uh, our, our display here. And let's go ahead and get rid of some of this crap. Close up all this extra stuff. And let's go in and let's create our new sequence. And let's see if we can't get a good uh, one for one. We might even remap something while we're at it. So I think we have to remap the uh, bells. I don't know that I did that. Um, okay, so looking at the sequence here, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new sequence, musical sequence. And we're going to look for, I think it's celebration. Celebration time, come on. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. Or maybe we didn't paste it in here. So let's go back into the, um, let's go into my documents. And let's go into Linerama, let's audio, and celebration. Right click, copy. And let's go because all of my MP3s are saved on my Dropbox in my Dropbox account. So now it's uh, selected and click OK, open. Um, I'm going to pick 40 frames per second just for the hell of it. And timings, I'm going to do a new timing. I'm only going to do one and that's the beats this time. I like beats and bars, I'll add beat, bars later. Alright, so let's go ahead and click done. We've created the new sequence. Now once again, whenever you get into the mapping of the sequence, you want to make sure you're in wherever all your models or most of your models are. Uh, I have everything I use in model groups. I created this model group. This is in under your layout tab. You come in here and you can add a group. You can right click and add a group and you can create all kinds of groups um, in your sequencer tab. Now from here I'm going to go to the import tab and import effects and I'm going to look for two things. Number one, I'm going to go to the lor.lms file. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, now funny, I didn't even think where did I save this sequence at? File, this is save as, save as. Where did I save that to? This is in my LOR backups 2010. I don't want it there. 2016 celebration it's in it's in the M drive that's why it probably took longer let's go into sequences which is where it goes in the under the lightorama 2016 there we go so now that's done it should be saved let's go into um, documents lightorama we're back to this choose import file and we're looking for sequences and let's look for 2016 celebration open now we're going to go to the mapping channels and we're going to load our map now now I know where my map is saved my map is saved in my Lightorama sequences directory and this if you watched the other videos you've seen me create this now one of the things that I learned was uh, that the twig trees node did not work very well so I'm going to go ahead and add in the tree line and that will be uh, I clicked add model for import and I scroll down here and it should be down here on the bottom now I'm gonna go ahead and remap it even though I don't and I don't understand this I really don't um, I don't understand why uh, the tree line the twig trees they're already mapped why they won't work uh, and why they refuse they refuse to run it but 
it worked just fine whenever I had it set up for the tree line and that's what we're going to run it off of so I'll probably zip through this real quick now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to see if I have uh, added the bells in the bells were an afterthought and something you may I may not have recorded me adding in but I used there was plenty other sequencing bells left add and bells right okay if I scroll down here we've got a couple new options so we have three nodes for the bells now uh, it, I'm sure if you followed along and you've seen the display I, I made these uh, these wonderful bells I found them at Lowe's they were both broken I got them for five dollars a piece I re-strung RGB's into them and they look amazing um, I created a custom model last year the third channel is the the green bow that's there and the bells are red and the bell number uh, channel number one is bell, the left bell channel number two is the right bell and both models are sequential in other words they're both identical they just start with different star channels so from here I'm just going to remember that node one is going to be whatever it was in my LOR sequence now uh, it does help I'm going to go grab that real quick I'm going to go ahead and save this mapping and I'm going to overwrite my existing one and uh, I believe that's everything that I need to bring into here there is one thing I do want to verify that I did right which was the icicles I have icicles up one icicles down one those are the two channels from LOR that uh, I just don't seem to recall doing correctly or not doing at all so I, I go through all this trouble there's no reason not to double check yourself so I'm gonna look down here here's the icicles here's icicles up one and that's what it's called cancel and icicles down one so I need to make sure anytime I bring something in that I'm using the same channels for it and uh, let's go back into X lights and we've got icicles up one icicles down one and notice uh, this is important uh, I want whatever is in icicles one to overwrite over the entire model of icicles up chase and icicles down chase that means this effect this effect here that's brought in will be applied to all the layers or the levels all of the uh, individual models that are carried within this strand or the, all of these nodes so that way I won't have to copy and paste it all in there um, I believe that we're all set so let's go ahead uh, and click OK and cross our fingers for some uh, awesome action here and it may take a second there we go it looks like it's flickered or flashed I'm going to right click and add in edit the display elements which it always pops up on the other screen and I'm going to add in the beat track which we already created and there's the beat track and we'll activate the beat track only because I like to zoom in and see at the node level so now some of the things that we uh, crossed over were the tree line there should be some node effects in here. We're crossing our fingers because we did have a problem with that last time. And now we're going to render effects. And we are rendering in 12 seconds. It and we'll slide over and it looks like we've rendered our effects onto the tree line. So we uh, have correctly imported our data for the tree let's go look at the windows down here's the windows down and let's go look at the windows up that looks pretty good yes that's good I'm happy with this okay let's look at the bells because that was a that was an afterthought this is bells right so I didn't really expect it to be anything amazing because it wasn't sequenced as a bell but we'll see you know it might be cool um, so if the bells came in let's see what else came in um, presence radio sign let's see nope that's the pixel radio sign radio sign dumb so here's our radio sign it's already turned on I don't have to go in and sequence the radio sign to turn it on and off because it's a dumb RGB channel reindeer let's make sure our reindeer showed up so it looks like we were very successful in our attempt to uh, 
to import everything. So here is the roof line lower. Let's open that up and see if anything came out of it. And it looks like we've got the roof line on. There we go. Very good. And it looks like the icicles up chase uh, came out. The roof upper. Uh, let's see if there was some sequencing in there. Yep, there's some sequencing right there. So it looks like this is a positive test. I'll tell you what, I'm going to turn up the music and move the microphone a little closer and let's go grab the uh, thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold the control button down so it doesn't dock and then I'm going to resize this so it's a little smaller and let's have a look see at the sequencing. Oh, you can't hear it because it's in my headphones. But I'm pretty happy with that. You can see the bells ring in there. A little jaggedy on the sequencing, but uh, overall, I think it came out. Uh, Overall, I think it came out very well. The uh, pace to foreground from background worked very well. I've got a good color mix here between whenever I'm fading white over top of the red or uh, layering as we used to do in uh, LOR. And there's a lot to add into this. So I'm pretty happy, guys. I hope that this video is something that's going to be useful for you. I hope it makes you uh, uh, just a little bit more uh, confident in being able to uh, import anything old that you have into an RGB sequence from LOR and then import it into your X lights. Um, I know that this took about an hour to do just this and just having this amount of sequencing done for one song is phenomenal. Uh, I, I know I can delete some of it out, I can adjust it and change it and make it be a little more what I want it to be. However, um, a lot of the, the hard work is done. A lot of the timings are taken care of. Now all that's left is let's add that mega tree in. Let's add all the extra pixel elements in that were a, a lot more challenging to deal with in uh, the sequence editor. So, hey guys, I'm signing off. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And uh, I hope to, to get more content out soon. Um, but I still have a kitchen to put together. So uh, it might be a little while. So enjoy these videos. Uh, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.